In this video, you're going to learn what a vector Jacobian product is and what it has to do with reverse mode automatic differentiation, aka backpropagation. We will use the JAX deep learning framework. Let's get started. Hi and welcome to this new video where we're going to use the reverse mode automatic differentiation capabilities of JAX. We will again be looking at a vector valued function f which takes as an input a four-dimensional vector space x and maps that one to a three-dimensional output space u. If we define an evaluation point for this function to be a random collection of numbers, let's maybe pick the values 1.0, 0.5, 1.5 and 2.0, we see that is a four-dimensional vector and then we can query f at this evaluation point and we will see this returns a three-dimensional vector. We can use reverse mode automatic differentiation in order to obtain the full Jacobian of f and recall the Jacobian is nothing else than the derivative of the function with respect to its inputs and since both input and output is vector valued we expect this one to be a matrix the collection of derivatives and we can take this derivative by saying well first let's call this the full Jacobian and say this is jax dot jack reverse by applying it to f to the function and then jax performs a function transformation taking the function keeping its input signature so it will again need a four-dimensional vector as an input but instead of returning a three-dimensional vector it will return the jacobian enumerator layout enumerator layout means that we add the additional axes of the input to the columns or to the right which means that this one will be a three by four dimensional Jacobian matrix. Let's evaluate it at the evaluation point and then we can look at it and see this is the Jacobian matrix. And if you watch the video on the Jacobian vector product, which is the primitive for forward mode automatic differentiation, you will see that the numerical values of the Jacobian function are identical. So we have two options to obtain them with JAX here, at least in the full Jacobian sense. However, in contrast to Jacobian vector products, we are now interested in vector Jacobian products. And you can think of them as a matrix vector product, but with multiplying a vector from the left. So we will again have a vector, let's call it A, and this vector is left multiplied to the Jacobian matrix. And of course, if we assume that A is a column vector, we have to transpose it. So I will just do dot T here in that syntax to have a correct matrix vector multiplication. However, here in Python, we could technically ignore it. I will just leave it here for completion. So that's what we're going to do. Well, then let's define a left multiplication point. So let's say left multiplication point and also just a random collection of numbers here numpy array and say 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 1.0. And now this vector Jacobian product, as said, will just be taking this left multiplication point and transposing it, although technically not necessary, here with JAX, and then a matrix multiplication using the add sign with the full Jacobian. And this then returns a four-dimensional vector. And that's crucial because if we look at the shape of the full Jacobian, we see it's three by four. And if we make a left multiplication with a vector, this vector has to be of the shape free. And that's what it is. It's of shape free. And consequentially, those two dimensions contract and we are left with four. So we're getting a four dimensional vector out. And that's again what is happening conceptually. However, similar to the Jacobian vector product, oftentimes we're not interested in the full Jacobian, but only in the result of this vector Jacobian product. And hence, it would be unnecessary and computationally even quite expensive to obtain the full Jacobian. And that's what we're going to do with the intrinsics of JAX. So now we're going to use a JAX function to obtain the VJP, the vector Jacobian product, without explicitly computing the full Jacobian matrix. And also tune in for the next video where we will, similar to the Jacobian vector product, do a benchmark and show that for larger Jacobian matrices, often with a sparsity structure, this VJP is way superior in comparison to this naive approach. 
But how does it work? Well, it's going to be a bit more complicated than the Jacobian vector product, but also it makes sense once we write it down. And we're going to use the function from JAX, which is called VJP, vector Jacobian product. Well, what does it take? Of course, it requires us to hand over the function f, and then it also needs the primal information. And primals refer to the evaluation point. Whenever we want to do the VJP, our Jacobian is evaluated at a certain point, and that is the primal. And we, quite verbose, called it here the evaluation point. So we want to query it at the evaluation point. And if you watch the video on the JVP, you know that the interface for the JVP requires a tuple. However, here we just can add all the arguments. So imagine the function f takes another argument, so y or set, we would just add the ones here without using a tuple. Okay, let's execute that. Well, what is it going to return? Is it already evaluating the VJP? Well, it's missing this left multiplication point, right? So it returns a lot, and this seems rather confusing, but maybe we can make sense of it. So it returns a tuple, which is given by these round brackets here, and the first entry is a device array, and the other one is a partial function. And what we're getting here is an evaluation of the original function together with another function. Well, how confusing, and let's assign some names to them. And let's call the first one to be f evaluated. And the second one I want to call vjp function. And if we look at f evaluated, we see, well, it's a couple of entries. Maybe we've seen that before. Let's go all the way up and see. Ah, yeah, it's the same as if we have f evaluated. Why do we get that here? And that's because whenever we do reverse mode automatic differentiation, we need one forward pass through the actual function that we want to differentiate. And if you've ever worked with artificial neural networks, you're probably familiar with that, because whenever you do backpropagation, which is reverse mode automatic differentiation, you first do a forward pass before you can do the reverse pass. And executing VJP just does the forward pass, and creates another function which can do the reverse pass. And the clue is that we can now query that function multiple times, because we already have done the forward pass, we can do multiple reverse passes since we've saved all the intermediary values. I mean, of course, so far this maybe does not make much sense. Let's first see that this one also produces the same result than the naive implementation. For this, let me quickly recall that. And here we had the VJP by doing that. So I will just do left multiplication point and then with the arrows, I can get the result again. And recall it was a four dimensional vector. Let's use this VJP function and look at its signature, and it takes a cotangent information. And cotangent is just a term from differentiable geometry, and in our more practical terms, it's this left multiplication point. So we will just call the VJP function on the left multiplication point. And now it returns a tuple, and its first entry is the VJP result. It returns a tuple since potentially we could have had more than one argument to f because the result of the vjp function is of the same shape as the input to the original function f. However, since we are just interested in this one result, we will just index the tuple at zero. And here we go, we get the same result. What is happening under the hood? Well, when we call the vjp, then Jax is tracing the execution of f at the particular evaluation point. And it is saving intermediary values, which it can then use with a call to this VJP function to compute derivative information, or in other words, the shortcut to a vector Jacobian product. A big thanks to all the patrons of the channel. If you also want to support my vision of free education on these advanced mathematical topics, you will find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more Czechs content on this channel and maybe also Julia if you're interested in a different perspective on automatic differentiation. Here you will now see similar videos, including a playlist for this content. I hope to see you in one of the next videos.